Today, I thought I'd talk about chaos. And so my title today is How to Get Rid of Chaos in Your Life. What a great subject. One of the things that we talk about at Agape is we believe there's an infinite. Religion calls it God. I don't call it God, but I can call it God. I choose to call it infinite mind, infinite intelligence, the infinite spirit, because it's undefinable. It's infinite. It's everywhere present. It's all that is. It's all wisdom. It's all power. It, all, it has always been and always will be. But to label it is to limit it, to not do it justice. What I know is that this infinite created everything out of itself. And so the power to create in religious science, we call it the law. The law, the power we use to create, responds in kind and amount and directly corresponds to our mental atmosphere. Our mental atmosphere is all the thoughts that permeate our being. They create an atmosphere and that atmosphere attracts to us or repels from us. So the question then becomes, what makes up your mental atmosphere? Well, first, it's your conscious thoughts. It's, I choose to go on that boat. That's a conscious thought. I choose to marry that person. That's a conscious thought. I choose to drive to the grocery store. Conscious thought. I choose to study human behavior. Conscious thought. I choose to be happy in this situation. Conscious thought. I choose not to be happy in this situation. Conscious thought. So that's a part of your mental atmosphere. It's a very small part of your mental atmosphere. Think about this. Psychology says that human beings have roughly 60,000 thoughts a day. So in my lifetime, based on my age, I've had over 1.5 billion thoughts. How many have I consciously chosen? Probably a very small number, but that's not all of my thoughts. Because the next thing that makes up my mind and your mental atmosphere is your subconscious thoughts, which are all the thoughts stored in your memory. Everything you've observed, everything you've heard, everything you've read, everything you've watched are all stored in your subconscious. They're all there. And if you really worked at it, you could pull out any thought, any piece of information that have come across your life while you've been alive. That's why people can go under a deep hypnotism and they can't understand something and the hypnotist will literally guide that person to go into the subconscious mind and be able to pull out an event that they don't even remember, but they did witness. And they can pull out every detail because it's all stored in the subconscious mind. So, do you think that's all that's in your mental atmosphere? We forgot the biggest piece. The biggest piece is your unconscious thoughts. And your unconscious thoughts reflect the collective consciousness or the thoughts of humanity from the beginning of time. We are surrounded by the mental atmosphere of humanity. Ernest Holmes called it race consciousness. It's not about race, it's about the human race, the collective thoughts of all of humanity. So if you think about that right now, what is, what is the collective consciousness of humanity? Right now, it's absolute chaos, isn't it? That's an interesting thing. 
Every person, every place, everything has a mental atmosphere. And this energetic atmosphere causes that person, place, or thing to have a vibration that matches the experience with it. So let me take that and give you an example. A person who has been physically and mentally abused and not done any healing work has a vibration. It's probably a very, I'm going to use the word low, dark, but it's not going to be a high vibration of love, not a high vibration of, of peace, of beauty, of joy, of fulfillment. A thing, a gun that's been firing and killed people, it's going to have a low energy as well. A place. I'll use the place of uh, the Himalayas. I've been to Mount Kailash. It has an energy. I've been to Sedona. It has an energy. I've not been to Auschwitz, but I understand it has an energy. It's the energy of the experience of the people who were there and we identify that energy with the place. And so, if you're in the area, in Auschwitz, let's say, visiting, you're gonna have a very different experience than if you're on Mount Kailash, or you're in Sedona, or the Great Pyramids. And I don't know what the energy is of the Great Pyramids. I don't really know how they were made, but if they were made by slaves, it's going to be a mixed energy. So understanding that you have a mental atmosphere, that every other person has a mental atmosphere, that every place has a mental atmosphere, and everything has a mental atmosphere, all of that is impacting you. So... If our mind is full of chaotic thoughts, the law, which creates everything, can only respond in a chaotic way. So you wonder, why am I having a mixed life experience? It's because you're putting out mixed thoughts. You see, we must do everything we can to only feed our mind Thoughts that align with what we choose to create in our life. Not only that, we must surround ourselves in a supportive atmosphere. That's the key. We talk at Agape about a persistent and consistent spiritual practice of meditation and of doing spiritual mind treatment. Spiritual mind treatment is another name for affirmative prayer. It's basically about building a mental atmosphere that you are an infinite, divine, individualized expression of all that is, and that there's a power in you that responds to you, and that as you give the mental image with clarity, conviction, and feeling, and you act and speak and think in alignment with that, and you hold that, you will create that experience in your life. What I've come to understand for me is that I am spirit expressing. But I'm not only spirit, I'm physical Li. So I have two aspects. I'm not aware that the spirit in me is always alive and functioning because my ego dulls that out. So I look at my life twofold. One, I'm an infinite expression of the infinite and my meditation practice allows me to connect into that. I'm also a human being with a body and a mind. I believe I'm here 
to have the greatest experience that I can imagine, to experience love at the highest of all levels, and that I'm able to use the power of my mind to think and create. I think the key to living the fulfilling life I think we all seek is in the balance of understanding we are spiritual and we are human. And one is not better than the other, but we learn how to use them in harmony, in balance, to create the most magnificent life. I believe that if you wait for something outside of yourself to change your life, you will always be a victim to whatever the thought atmosphere is that surrounds you. And you know what I'm talking about because you know people out there who are victims. In fact, you probably are in some form or fashion because we all are. We've all given our power away to something outside of ourself. I believe it's time we start to reclaim that power. That's the journey of self-discovery, understanding you are spirit, understanding that the power to create rests within how you think, speak, act, and feel and where you keep that focus. Everyone in the world is subject to the law. Subject to the law of what the whole world believes. And most failure is the result of the collective consciousness of humanity operating through us. What is the collective consciousness of humanity? There's not enough. I've got to get mine. I'm better than you. It's about competitiveness. Instead about there's more than enough for everyone. I don't need to judge that person. They're on their own journey. I can choose to spend time with them because maybe they're not a vibrational match to me. That's okay. I don't care if they're family, friends, whatever. Once you understand that the vibration of things that you surround yourself with impacts you, you will start to minimize time with that which is not serving your highest expression of love. I did that with my brother Ron. I know Ron was a, an expression of the infinite, but while on this earthly plane, he was a very angry, angry individual. And I chose, consciously chose, not to be around it. And yet, when Ron was making his transition, he called me, had no one else to call. Mom and dad were dead, or mom was dead, and he didn't like dad. So I went to my brother, and I worked with him to get everything, all his affairs in order to make him comfortable so that he could leave this planet in a way that he wanted. I could do that because that was an act of love. I want you to know that no matter where you are with your health, with your money, with your relationships, with knowing truth for yourself, knowing that you are totally worthy, all the past is, is just a memory. It's in your subconscious mind. Now you can begin to override it by thinking new thoughts, aligning feelings with those new thoughts, aligning your thoughts, your words, your actions toward that new thing. And realize that chaos is your friend because chaos causes you to question and it causes you to understand you have the power to be in the chaos and it not own you. But you know how to pivot and come back to what truly is valuable to you. Remember, what we focus on, we create. I tell you, don't believe me. Don't believe anyone. Test it. Start today. Create a new focus. Keep it there and observe the results in your life. I promise you, you'll find something interesting out that the power you've been seeking has always been within you. And you'll understand that where you focus is everything.